Hey everyone, Fuse Mike coming at ya. Over the last six or so months now, we've been spending a lot of time looking at Web3, how to get started with it, and various different tools that you would need as a game developer to actually integrate with Web3. And while I think there's a lot of great videos on the channel, I realized there's no really easy getting started guide. So in this video, I'm gonna be walking basically through the various different layers I think you should look at if you're trying to get started in the, the Web3 space as a game developer. Really starting from the most basic of things and going into the more complicated topics. And we'll break this up into kind of five steps that I think you would want to walk through if you're trying to get started in this space. If you do have questions about anything we cover, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, you can also go ahead and chat with me and the rest of the community over on Discord. So step number one is actually going to be, if you're brand new to Web3, I highly, highly recommend just understanding the wallets that are available and just doing very basic transactions. Get yourself up to speed with Ethereum or Binance or Polygon and just try spending a couple dollars really just to play around with different wallets, moving your wallets from on the exchanges to the blockchain. Once you're on the blockchain, maybe using a DeFi or decentralized finance application to swap to various different tokens. And that I think will start to give you a taste of what the Web3 experience is like. And also it will help you contextualize what you can and can't do with the blockchain. I think that's incredibly important. And to me also helps me contextualize a lot of the UX problems that you might face as a player in the gaming ecosystem, uh, which we'll touch on a little bit later. But really, I would start at that high level, get an understanding of what is Wallet Connect, what is MetaMask, what is any of the other web wallets that are out there in the ecosystem and understand like how you could actually interact with them. If they're secure, if they're not secure, should you use hardware wallets associated with them? There are a lot of different questions there, but just at a basic level, I think that's where you would want to start to just dip your toes in. And I think there's a lot of basic one-on-one -on -one content for just learning about the blockchain that I would really recommend starting with. So now that you have a basic understanding of blockchains and the wallet ecosystem, the next thing to take a look at is smart contracts in my opinion. And the reason for smart contracts is I would really focus on, on the core standards that are out there. So you have primarily within the Ethereum ecosystem, right? You have the concept of an ERC-20 token, you have the concept of an ERC-721 token, and you have a concept of an ERC-1155 token. There are a lot of other standards out there, but I think these are the three ones that I would really start as the basics. We have videos that I highly recommend on the channel for going through and creating your own ERC-20 token or a 1155 token for NFTs and just touching those, understanding what it is actually a Solidity smart contract and being able to deploy that now that you've understood how the blockchain wallet ecosystem works is I think incredibly valuable as the next step because that lays the foundation for you to actually start understanding what actually encompasses a smart contract and what are those functions that are in there that I would be calling and then actually executing whenever you call into the smart contract from the game that you're building. The next step if we're moving up the chain is taking a look at a back end service that you can build and deploy as a means to actually go ahead and interact with the blockchain. There are a lot of different services that are out there from Infura to I think personally my favorite is Morales. And I think what's really nice about say Morales is it provides the backend infrastructure that's necessary to not only listen to the blockchain, but then also has the tools that you would need like a database uh, or as well as execution layers that you could actually write custom application logic in your backend. I think Really from that perspective, I think Morales has both a great an economy resource as well as a great um, service that generally speaking for game developers, you'll want to take advantage of. And I think their YouTube channel is actually great at for lots of bits and pieces of content that you might consider learning and consuming as you're on this journey towards getting started with Web3. The next two layers, I think really more apply towards game developers. And the fourth layer is kind of, again, building on this stack, right? Starting from wallets, going to smart contract, then to backend, now to your actual Unity game. So on the game level, we have 
a bunch of different SDKs that you can integrate into your game to read the state of the blockchain and if you want, write the state to the blockchain. Generally here, I recommend just trying to design games around the fact that you want to read state from the blockchain. If you want to be more advanced, you can do writing, but if you kind of look at the UI UX that a player has to go through for writing the blockchain, it's kind of messy. So generally speaking, I would recommend just trying to read state from the blockchain. And you have a lot of different SDKs for that as a choice. So you have an Ethereum as an example of an SDK that you can uh, integrate. Uh, it's a little bit more nuanced in how you would integrate it into your application, but I think has a lot of the right tooling necessary to kind of be a core pillar of how you might consider developing any type of blockchain game. You also have on the kind of more generalized website, Chainsafe, I think is a really great tool that you can, you can take advantage of. And on our end, we're, we're developing the Fused VR APIs and SDKs to allow you to authenticate users very easily, seamlessly across desktop and mobile and ensure that when someone says that they own their NFT, they're actually the person that they say they are. So you have a bunch of different options there, each providing, I think, a different kind of core competency into the mix here. Personally, I think this is the area where I think game developers need better tooling, but that should hopefully serve as a base layer, I think, for actual actually getting started with integrating your game with the blockchain itself and being able to at least start reading the state from different smart contracts. And finally, my, my fifth step here would be to really kind of take a step back from an architecture perspective. And then if you're building out really a comprehensive play to earn game, you're going to need a very custom backend that rewards players when they complete certain tasks. And to that end, you have to understand that players, generally speaking, try to cheat as much as possible when it comes to even regular games. If you incentivize players through a monetary system with play to earn, naturally players are going to cheat. And so you need anti-cheat mechanisms in your, in your game, which requires a backend service like PlayFab to ultimately go ahead and confirm whether or not a player has actually completed a task in your game or has done kind of a multiplayer task and won the game. And in both those scenarios, you would then go ahead and reward the player. I think PlayFab is kind of one of those key services that are out there that kind of provide a generic game backend as a service, if you will, that will ultimately make your life easier when it comes to development. Unity also has their own backend as a service, which we haven't really taken a look at at the channel, but I think nonetheless is still a an, an option if you're looking at building out really a game server backend logic to facilitate anti-cheat, multiplayer, anything where you want to prove that a player has done an action and receives an reward. And to that end, when it comes to rewarding players, you need to do things in an optimal way. And I think on that end, you'll need to ultimately integrate some sort of backend as a service with something like Merkle trees that we talked about in one of our previous videos to really do batch transfers optimally and send tokens to players in a very seamless fashion where they're allowed to claim it and minimize the gas fees that you have to pay. All five of these different layers, I think really build on each other as you build out a game and start maturing. And so that's why I think really, I would take it in baby steps and kind of work your way from the wallet all the way down to services like PlayFab. I put it all summarized in this video together to show that also there are a lot of different steps that are out there when it comes to building out Web3 games. There's a reason why it's a very new space, complicated space, but I think ultimately really exciting space because there's so much room for improvement and opportunity as a result of that. So generally speaking, this is where I would start when it comes to learning and starting to build your, your own game. And then I think at the end of the day, it's just coming up with an idea and then kind of walking through this five step process as you start to learn about all the different technology and how they fit together. But that's generally my take on the top five things I, I would take a look at when starting to learn. Again, if you have questions about any of these, happy to chat about these over on Discord. But otherwise, I think that wraps it up for now. So thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. It's been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.